Well, good evening, everyone. Please open your Bibles to Joshua chapter 2. Like I mentioned it Wednesday night, I wanted to preach on Rahab the harlot, or Sunday night, I was preaching Sunday night. And this is the message the Lord has put on my heart to share with you. Um, I thank him. I thank him for the message, as I usually do. <clears throat> the true token is the title. Move this down a little bit. True token is the title. And uh, the token, if you look up just the English definition, I don't use the English dictionary too often. I usually use the Bible to define words. So I think that's the best source of biblical words, things that matter, just be defined out of the Bible. Basically, the, the word token is very simple. It's a visible or tangible representation of a fact, a quality, or feeling. So an example of a token is like an example of somebody gives a gift to you, a token of their appreciation. Um, I like the souvenir, I think, the most. My wife would probably think I'm crazy for saying this because I like to throw out souvenirs mostly. But um, souvenirs are pretty neat when you're a kid. You get that, and 10, 20 years later, you get that souvenir, and you look at that, and you think, I can visualize that vacation just looking at this souvenir. It's a, uh, souvenirs are powerful in that they bring back memories, and uh, we can literally see that tangible item from our past. We actually can see it in that tangible item in front of us. It brings back that memory. And that's the, the token is the blood of Christ. I just got to give the answer away fast. I'm, like I said many times, I'll be a terrible teacher. I just give you the answer. The token is the blood of Christ. And when, when we think on this, the token of the blood of Christ, we see Christ's eternality. We see his, his um, incarnation, born of a virgin. We see his perfect obedience to his Father in everything in all generations of all times. Christ doesn't deploy his free will at all. Only deploys the will of the Father. Christ's perfect obedience is amazing and eternal. His death on the cross we visualize when we see the blood. We see his burial, his resurrection, his ascension, his interceding for us right now, and his future return. We see the full package of the Lord Jesus Christ when we think about the true token, the blood. <clears throat> now this event that I'm about to read about um, Rahab the harlot is from our teaching time. I guess I better turn there. It's from our teaching time in the book of Joshua. And I've already taught past this point, but um, backing up into chapter 2, this is the event where the children of Israel had just left after 40 years, the wilderness wanderings, and they have entered into the promised land, finally. And uh, they got the all clear from God Almighty to go in, and Joshua right away, no delay, says we're going in. Three days from now we're going in. And the assignment, of course, is to kill everybody. Even most of the cities, they're all their animals. The assignment is to kill them all. Joshua explains that to the children of Israel. They're going to kill everybody. As they approach Jericho, of course, uh, they need to check it out a little bit. So there's two spies sent in, and that's where we take up the story in chapter 2 of Joshua. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of Shittim two men to spy secretly, saying, Go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house. That's a prostitute named Rahab, and lodged there. And it was told to the king of that city, Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out this country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, he knew exactly where they'd be, uh, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into thine house, for they be come to search out all the country. And the, women, the woman took the two men and hid them, and then her answer to those that the king sent to say, you better um, give them up to us. She said thus, there came men unto me, but I wist not whence they were. And it came to pass about the time of shutting of the gate when it was dark, that the men went out, whither the men went, I would not. Pursue after them quickly, for ye shall overtake them. She said, they just left, just go right now, hurry up. Spit back. And they took off. But she had actually, verse 6, brought them up to the roof of the house and hid them with the, the stalks of flax, which she had laid in order upon the roof. And the men pursued after them the way the, 
uh, to Jordan under the fords, and as soon as they which pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. And therefore they were laid down, she, before they were laid down, these are the two spies, she came up to them on the roof, and she said unto the men that were on the roof, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror is fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. So Rahab the harlot is telling these two spies, it's already done. I believe it. Your God has delivered this land, not only Jericho, this land into your hands. It's a fact. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. That was 40 years prior. Still burnt into the mind of this woman. When you came up out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings, of the Amorites, that were on the other side, Jordan, of Shehan and Og, whom you utterly destroyed. There's none that survived those battles. They killed them all. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. He's, she's declaring righteousness is in one place. All sovereign control is in one place. There's only one good, and that's your God, is what she's telling these spies. Now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will also show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, and that ye will save alive my father, my mother, my brethren, my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from death. And the men answered her, our life for yours, if ye utter not this our business. And it shall be, when the Lord hath given us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with thee. You won't die. Then she let down by a cord through the window, for her house was upon the town wall. And she dwelt upon the wall, and she said unto them, they were standing at the bottom of the wall at this point, Get you to the mountain, lest the pursuers meet you, and hide yourselves there three days until the pursuers be returned, and afterward may ye go your way. And the men said unto her, We will be blameless of this thine oath, which thou hast made with us, that we swore to you. They said, This is going to come true. You're going to be alive, you and your family. Behold, when we come into the land, thou shalt bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which thou didst let us down by. And thou shalt bring thy father and thy mother and thy brethren and all thy father's household home unto thee. Get them all in the house. And it shall be that whosoever shall go out of the doors of the house into the streets, his blood shall be upon his head. He didn't, he didn't look to that token. He didn't stay in the house. And whosoever shall be with thee in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be upon him. If any of those people die inside the house, then the spies are guilty of their death. And if thou utter this our business, but if you utter this our business, then we will be quiet of thine oath. We won't tell Joshua that there's an oath with you and I, and you'll die. And she said, according unto your words, so be it. She committed right there. There's no question. The God of Israel is the real God, and there's only life through that scarlet thread. Only way. And she sent them away, and they departed. And you know what she did? She bound that with a knot. She bound that scarlet line in the window. Boy, I bet that was the best knot you could ever tie. That was her life and her family's life. She tied a secure knot there. And they went and came unto the mountain, and abode there three days, just as she prescribed, until the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but found them not. So the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua, the son of Nun, and told him all the things that befell them. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country faint because of us. It's the psychology of the war. I already mentioned it during the teaching time. Also turn, I want to show you the end of the story, uh, chapter 6 and verse 20. Let's go flip right to the end. Of course, the children of Israel attack. 
And in chapter 6 and verse 20 is the conclusion. So the people shouted, this is the people, the children of Israel, with the priest, when the priest blew the temp, uh, trumpets. And it came to pass when the people heard, verse 20, if I didn't tell you, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, and the people shouted with a great shout, that's what God prescribed to do when they attacked this city, Jericho, that the wall fell down flat. I bet that was a big bone. So that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city, and they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man, woman, young and old, ox, sheep, ass, with the edge of the sword. But Joshua had said unto the two men that had spied out the country, Go into the harlot's house, bring out thence the woman and all that she hath, as you swear unto her. And the young men that were spies went in, brought out Rahab and her father and her mother, brethren, and all that she had, and they brought out all her kindred, and left them without the camp of Israel. So they were all safe. So every one of these that were under that scarlet thread were safe and secure, and everybody outside of that scarlet thread was annihilated, was destroyed with the sword. <clears throat> this is a picture of the sure wrath upon those that are outside of the blood of Christ. Those of us that die out of our lifetime outside of that scarlet thread without the blood of Christ shed for us will be cut into shreds eternally. <clears throat> By way of introduction, look right up in the page that we're at, that these against our Lord are cursed. Joshua said it in verse 17 of chapter 6 here in Joshua, and, and the city shall be accursed, even it and all that are therein, to the Lord. So the Lord proclaimed to Joshua, that all those outside that scarlet thread are cursed. <clears throat> Only Rahab the harlot shall live, she and all that are within her in the house, that are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that were sent. And ye in any wise keep yourselves from the cursed. Wow. Keep yourselves from the cursed. Keep yourselves from, from the world. Keep yourselves from all these other false gods and false ways, lest ye make yourselves accursed when ye take of the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. So Joshua proclaimed clearly God's will upon the city of Jericho. All will perish, and that's what comes to pass. And Rahab the harlot in the middle of all this chaos, and those spies come to her house, and she sees these two men and hears their message, and she's given by grace of God to say, there's a sure death. There's sure death, and I deserve it. Her being a harlot wasn't the concern. It was her being, what did God say? Accursed. Everybody outside, everybody outside the camp of Israel, before there was a uh, scarlet thread was de declared, was accursed by God Almighty. Either, they're all going to die. Their souls, even though they're eternal, are cursed of God and they shall perish. Harlot was This harlot was convinced of that. And it wasn't her immorality that was her problem. It was God's decree upon those that are outside of Christ. And say that's a frightful message. I remember it being frightful for me. And some of us need to be frightened with the message. That those that are outside of Christ shall perish eternally. Rahab the harlot sees that and believed it. And she frantically pressed these men. Remember what they what they said? You made us give us do this covenant. You made us do this. She pressed them hard. You give me a sure sign, a true token, and that's what she pressed them for. In Joshua two eleven, I'm going to recap here. You don't have to flip around. It's right here in your outline. When she was convinced of the sure death of the city of Jericho, she con she confessed. She had acknowledged, she agreed with, that's what the word confess means, that the Lord your God, to these spies, is the God in heaven above and earth beneath. She declared there's no other means of life. You hold life, God Almighty. You are the God of life. Now, there's all kinds of false gods in Jericho. As many people as there were in there, there was false gods, all kind of heinous things going on. But this harlot knew all the wicked things that she grew up around were wicked now. 
They used to be your place of worship. They used to be your place of comfort. They used to be the things that persuade her soul that she'd be okay eternally. Now none of that worked. She knew that this God is the real God. She deserved condemnation. And this God could do something about it. She showed kindness to these spies because she couldn't do any other at all. She couldn't do the opposite. They were her brethren. When she heard the message from their mouth, when she grasped that these, these are two of the children of Israel, that their God is mighty and, and awesome and delivered them out of sure death of the Egyptians, crushed the Egyptian army, in a, in a few minutes killed all the soldiers. She knew this was the God that could save and these men knew this God that saved and she wanted to align with them. She already had aligned with them when she believed she deserved condemnation. She just needed something to be sure that she'd be okay and all her family. She wasn't selfish either. She wanted all her family to be saved by the same God. She said, save alive my father, my mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all their little ones. She wanted everybody in the house saved. And that's what she got. When they said, our life for your lives, in verse 14 of our text, that's when they said, we are of one mind, woman. Our life is your life. You're saving us. You're saving you. When we go back and tell Joshua that scarlet thread is, your, is, is salvation and security in life, that's your life. And we know that. You know that. Rahab and we know that. Where our lives are bound together in this scarlet thread. <clears throat> and they did. They, she bound the line of scarlet thread in the window and got everybody inside. And they didn't leave that house. They did not leave it at all. They were protected, and they looked to that scarlet thread. And that's the true token that she begged them for. I want to be convinced in my inner beings, what she was saying, that I'm safe. I've got to have a token. I've got to have something that my mind goes to and that I rest finally. Because all I have in my life is torment and fear of death and hell and destruction. And that scarlet thread did it for her. When those spies said that scarlet thread is what we're going to announce to Jake, to, to uh, Joshua and they're going to go around your house and everybody inside will be safe, she couldn't take her eyes off that scarlet thread anymore. That's, that's her lifeline. And when the, fall fell, when the wall fell down, everybody in that house was looking at that thread. You think they're looking at, at the dog? You think they're looking at what they're going to make for food? You think they're looking at entertainment? That wall came down. Everyone in that house, their eyes were up in that window. Is that thread still attached? Is that not good? <laughs> Keep that up there. They're coming in to slaughter everybody. And they had their eyes on that scarlet thread in that house that whole time. Is it secure? Is it still there? That's my comfort. That's my peace. It's the scarlet. It's the blood of Christ. That's our comfort and our peace. There's, there's a five places in the scripture I want to go now with scarlet. The fifth is the false token. Scarlet shows up in the false church. I want to show you that. But first I want to show you in the true church where scarlet shows, shows up. And turn to Exodus 5 with me. Exodus. <clears throat> I said five, I meant 25. I'm sorry. Exodus 25. I even have it written wrong in the outline. Book of Exodus, chapter 25, and verse 1 is the first place that I found where scarlet shows up in the scriptures. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel that they bring me an offering of every man that giveth a willing with his heart. This is called the free will offering. This is an offering that's done outside of tithes. This is when the Lord presses on your conscience and says, I want to give the church an extra X amount of money. It's just an offering. In this day, it was to build a tabernacle. And this is the offering which ye shall take of them, gold, silver, brass, blue, purple, scarlet. Scarlet was the color fabric 
in the worship service of God Almighty. And, and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skins dyed red, and badger skins and shittim wood, oil for light, spices for anointing oil, for sweet incense, for seven onox stones and the stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. And let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. God's very tabernacle which was the picture of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, is made up of all these beautiful elements of this earth. And one of them is scarlet. So we know scarlet is part of the tabernacle, of the earthly tabernacle, is a picture of the heavenly tabernacle, the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we're going to dive a little deeper and go to Leviticus chapter 14 and see scarlet in the cleansing of the leper ceremony. Cleansing of the leper was an amazing uh, ceremony that, that Moses performed when God gave direction that the leper would be healed. That was only by God's decree and announcement. Then the priest would perform this in chapter 14 of Leviticus. <clears throat> and we read in verse 1, The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of the cleansing. He shall be brought unto the priest, and the priest shall go forth out of the camp, and the priest shall look, and behold, if the plague of leprosy be healed in the leper. Then shall the priest command to, <clears throat> priest command to take uh, for him, that is to be cleansed, two birds alive and clean, and cedar wood and scarlet, and hyssop. And the priest shall command that one of the birds be killed in an earthen vessel over running water. And as for the living bird, he shall take it, and the cedar wood, and the scarlet, and the hyssop, and shall dip them, and the living bird, in the blood of that that was killed over the running water. And he shall sprinkle upon him that is to be cleaned from the leprosy seven times, and shall pronounce him clean, and shall let the living bird loose into the open field. Now I've preached this passage before, this is the resurrection of Christ. It can also be interpreted that this is, the guilty sinner going free by the death of Christ. The guilty is let free, but the innocent was, was killed, was destroyed. And that's the blood. The blood was there from the, the dove that was killed, and the other dove was dipped in that with all the other elements that were the picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, and then the dove flew away that was set free. So this is the second example of scarlet in the scriptures. The third example of scarlet are all the worship of the tabernacle were covered with blue. I've, I preached that or taught that, remember? I said the access that we have to Christ is his bruises. And you someday, by the Lord's grace, you will touch him in heaven through his bruises. That's the only way we have access, those that he was tormented for, substitutionary way. Substitutionary way, really. <laughs> A little tongue-tied tonight. But in Leviticus, or in Numbers, is the next one. Turn to Numbers 4 and look at this. Please. Numbers chapter 4, the first eight verses explain again that this is where the, the, um, the certain Levite subfamily would pack away all the items of worship from the tabernacle. And all these things are packaged in blue except for, except for ones in scarlet. Let's see which one it is. And the Lord spake unto Moses and said unto Aaron, verse 1 of chapter 4 of Numbers, Take the sum of the sons of Kohath, Kohath from among the sons of Levi after their families by the houses of their fathers. From 30 years old and upward, even until 50 years old, all that enter into the host to do the work of the ta in the tabernacle of the congregation. This shall be the service of the sons of Kohath in the tabernacle of the congregation about the most holy things. And when the camp setteth forward, Aaron shall come and his sons, and they shall take down the covering veil and the cover of the ark of the testimony with it, and shall put thereon the covering of the badger skins, and shall spread over it the cloth holy of blue, and shall put it in the, at the staves thereof. And upon the table of showbread, they shall spread a cloth of blue and put thereon the dishes and the spoons and the bowls and covers and the covers with, with all. And the continual bread shall be thereon and they shall spread upon them a cloth of scarlet, the bread, and covering the same with a covering of badger skin and shall put the staves thereof. The only item of all the items that were packed away when the children of Israel packed up 
that tabernacle moved it. Only one was covered in scarlet and scarlet and it was the continual bread. The bread is a picture of the body of Christ in that worship sanctuary. Turn to Matthew 27 to see the New Testament de uh, declaration of this fulfillment of the prophecy of the scarlet wrapped around the bread of life, the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 27. Now this Matthew 27 passage is the event where Pilate, as the um, judge, had to appease the Jews to try to get them not to crucify Christ because he saw no guilt in them. And he he's, goes through quite a lot when he's talking to the Jews. And uh, the guilty, Barabbas, ends up released and the innocent Christ ends up crucified. And we saw that in the dove ceremony. So in Matthew 27, verse 17, I read, Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? Now, Barabbas was a convicted criminal. And Christ they falsely accused as being a criminal. And of course, he's pure, holy God. For, for he knew that for envy they had delivered Christ. They hated Christ and they wanted him to be crucified. He had Pontius knew this, or Pilate knew this. And when he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife said unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. Even his wife was saying, Don't crucify Christ. But the chief priests and the elders pursued the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. They should... They wanted to release Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all said unto him, Let him be crucified. The governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. He judged Jesus correctly, that he's the just one. See ye to it, then he had him crucified. What a fool. Had a just man crucified. Then answered all the people and said, Blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas, Unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he had him beat, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers and stripped him and put on him a scarlet robe. There it is. The scarlet was put on the Lord Jesus Christ when he was scourged and beaten in our place. And when they had pl plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head and, and a reed in his right hand, and they bowed the knee before him. They, they mocked him. He could have said, to hell with you, and he didn't. He said, they said, hell, hell, king of the Jews, and they spit upon him and took the reed and smote him on the head with those thorns on there that must have just really ached. And after that, they had mocked him. They took the robe off of him and put it on his own raiment on him and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man, Simon, and they compelled him to carry his cross. Jesus so beaten, you couldn't even recognize who he was. He didn't have any strength left in him to even carry the cross. And when they were come unto the place called Golgotha, that is to say, the place of the skull, they gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall, and when he had tasted thereof, he, he wouldn't drink it. And they crucified him and parted his garments, casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. Christ was wrapped in that scarlet robe when he was scourged of God-haters to show the Old Testament fulfillment. In that tabernacle, the only thing wrapped in scarlet was the bread. Christ is the bread of life. He's the one that saves sinners. He's the one that died in our place. And he's the one that rep represented that scarlet thread, poured out his blood on the cross of Calvary. And Rahab the harlot looked to this one and relied on this one and knew in that house when all those, all those soldiers were coming in and destroying everybody else, peace and contentment. Because there's been proper blood shed for this whole house. Now there's a false token in contrast and studying this 
Um, in Revelation 17, let's look at Revelation 17. There came out of seven angels and had uh, seven vials and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. And if you study this, this chapter 17 in Revelation, the many waters is revealed and defined out of the word later. It's, it's all the people of all the nations that are outside of Christ. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast. That's the devil. That's the symbol of the devil, and he's scarlet-colored, full of names of the blasphemy, having seven heads and, and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, the false church mimics and mocks the gospel of Christ. You talk about other false religions. They're heinous and wicked. False Christian churches actually try to define Christ differently than the scriptures they do. They take the name Jesus and define him differently. That's the great whore. This is serious. The woman that was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold precious stones and pearls, having on a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. So all the same precious articles and items that were used to worship Christ looks like the false church has them. It looks like they have them. But upon her forehead was the name written, Mystery, Babylon, the great mother of harlots, the abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus, and when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? I will tell thee the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads and the ten horns. The beast that thou sawest was and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit. Go into perdition, that's into hell. And they that dwell on earth shall wonder, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Those that are not written in Christ from the foundation of the world are part of this whore church. When they behold the beast that was and what is, is not and yet is, and here is the mind which hath wisdom. Now this is the wisdom of the world. And if you got to look down at verse 13 to see what God defines that as. Verse 13 says, The wisdom of the world is that these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. They honor Satan in their message they honor someone other than christ and there's there's no one other than christ to, to honor in salvation but these that have the mind which is of their own wisdom in verse 9 they weren't written in the book but they've got all kinds of jewels all kinds of precious things that look religious and look right outwardly but inwardly their messages trusting something other than the scarlet thread, something other than the blood of Christ. They're relying on their heritage, their family, the love of money, the love of their life, the love of who they are. The love of themselves is the most common one. <clears throat> that woman, Rahab Harlot, she fell out of love of herself pretty fast when she found out it is sure death. She didn't run out of that house away from the protection and think she had power and strength to destroy what was coming. She stayed tucked, comfortable, and loved by God Almighty in her house, looking at that scarlet thread, knowing that all those false tokens that she used to take comfort in are all being destroyed out there right now. They're all being annihilated by this massive army of God Almighty, and they're all going to be destroyed. The place is perdition. That's hell. So the use of the message this evening is to stay under the protection of the preaching of Christ's blood. You don't know whether you're saved yet. Stay under the protection. Stay where the rest of us are looking to that scarlet thread. Stay in the house. Don't run out on your own and think you can figure this out. Just as Rahab and all her family stayed in the house with their eyes on the scarlet thread, you stay and you wait on this God. And a little precious passage on your weight is Proverbs 31 21 the bride of Christ says all her household are clothed with scarlet there's a precious clothing that God only provides to all the children all his children and that's and they're all 
all our house have clothing of scarlet. The blood of Christ washes away all our fornication, all our sin, all that we fell in in Adam. It's all gone. 